The first tool that I absolutely love is this six inch Incra T rule. Now they've taken a T track here, some bolts and little knobs, and they've essentially put this on so that you have both a square and markings at 30 seconds, 16 and 64 And the incredible thing about this is you just put your pencil in there and you've got a perfect line and you can use this to repeat exact measurements over and over. The one downside is this does require a 0.05 millimeter lead. I use the Zebra M301 pencil. Uh, it fits perfectly and it's one of my favorite pencils in the shop anyways. Uh, but this tool is incredible and I use it mainly as my normal square as well uh, when I'm laying out lines. They also make a three inch and a 12 inch of this. Uh, another downside, and I actually don't mind this, but it's, it's a little floppy. Now I find that to be okay because it means it's light. And when I'm moving it, I'm not dragging weight. So some people may be a little turned off by how thin this is, but I've never had it bend. Uh, I've dropped it a few times, it's totally fine. And I think it makes it a lot easier to move when it is light. The second tool I absolutely love is this Grows or Graz Machinist Square. It's about $30. This is the four inch version. They sell larger ones and they may sell three inch as well. But I use this for setting up machines, getting my table saw fence to 90 degrees, checking my blade, anything that requires uh, near perfect 90 degrees. This is great. It's relatively cheap. And because it's a machinist square, it will always stay at 90 degrees. There's no combination movement there. I highly suggest getting this if you just want to have something purely to set up your machines. You, of course, can use it as a normal square, but it has no markings on it. So it's really best used to set things up and to double check. Sometimes I check my chisels and plane blades uh, for square as well with this. It's a great tool for the price. The next thing I absolutely love is this dial indicator. Now you'll notice on Amazon and other places, there's a brand name, uh, I believe called A-Line, that sells for about $80. I didn't really want to pay that, so I took a chance on one of these clear knockoffs called x -Dovet. It was about $45, and as far as I can tell, it's identical except for these threaded inserts uh, on these are plastic, and I think they're little um, metal BB uh, style ones on the other one. Uh, but other than that, I'm pretty sure it's nearly identical. Now this is great for setting up your table saw and other machines. And let me tell you, it made a difference. When I was finally able to square my blade to the miter slot by adjusting the table and then square my fence to the same miter slot within a thousandth or two of an inch, unbelievably better cuts. And you can check it really quickly. This all disassembles and it came in its own box. This is uh, one I made, but it has this nice foam insert. So you can disassemble it and store everything. Now, this doesn't come with directions. That was one of the things I noticed in the reviews, but it's very simple. These are little leveling feet so that when you stick it in the miter slot, they go through so that it's not going up and down. And it's just two screws that go through here to hold it together. It comes with both Allen wrenches and everything you need. I highly suggest this. Um, it really makes a difference when you're setting up your table saw if you have problems with rip cuts especially. All right, the fourth thing I really love are T-bolts and these star knobs. For 20 of the T-bolts and 20 of the star knobs, it's about $30 on Amazon. And what these allow you to do is make an incredible amount of jigs. I've got my straight line rip jig here using all of these and all of my hold downs are just handmade. I use these on my uh, T-Track style bench. It's not actual T-Track, it's just a, a, a handmade one. And you can just create them of any size. These are just all out of two by fours and they go through and they're incredibly efficient at clamping if you need to clamp in the middle of a table. Uh, with, a, with a bar clamp, you cannot get to the middle of a table. I also make these which I use to pinch pieces of wood while sanding so that I don't have anything holding on to them. I just can do the whole surface. Um, it's unbelievable the variety of things you can make with these. There's tons of jigs out there and you know, just experiment, have fun with them, they're cheap. $30 for about 20 of each, and you're good to go. 
The next thing I really love is just a bar of solid beeswax. These can be found for a few dollars at health food stores, honestly, probably even Walmart these days. And what I use it for mostly is lubing up my plane so that I go really smoothly across the wood. It makes an incredible difference, and this thing will last forever, much like polishing compounds. Now, the one downside of this is if it's really cold in your shop, you have to just breathe a little warm air on it or hold it for a little bit to get it to rub on. Uh, but it's incredibly cheap, cost effective, and makes a great lubricant for your hand planes. The next tool I really love and I use all the time is the Scary Sharp Sharpening System. Now I know this is a bit controversial as some people swear by stones, wet, diamond, whatever, but I really love this. It's essentially lapping film, that sticky backed paper that you put on glass. Uh, the set comes with three plates of this glass, three of these mats, and uh, a sheet of each of these uh, films. It goes from 300 grit, I believe, all the way up to 60,000. Um, Jonathan Katz Moses made a video the other day going over this, and I've been using this system for probably a year and a half, two years. Uh, I've only had to buy a few pieces of replacement paper, and I sharpen my chisels and planes quite a bit. Um, it's very cost effective uh, if you're not someone who can afford to put a ton of money in up front, but wants incredibly flat uh, sharpening system. Just a little lubricant, and personally I use a jig, and you're good to go. I use this to flatten my the backs of my chisels as well. It lasts quite a long time, and I have just incredible sharpness. You know, mirror polish finish, no problem. Now the downside of this, of course, is that you will have to replace the paper over time. If you do want to spend hundreds of dollars on Shapton stones, uh, they're going to probably last you for your entire life. Um, a lot of people just go up to 1200 grit with diamond stones. Now, I think there is an incredibly noticeable difference by working much further up the grits, but 1200 grit diamond stone with a strop, and you're going to get pretty good anyways. However, I really like this system, and even in the long run, it may not be as cost effective. I couldn't afford hundreds of dollars up front for an equivalent uh, Shapton stone system that would get anywhere near as sharp with this high of a grit. So consider, uh, you know, whether you want to spend more up front or less up front, but get an incredible sharpening experience out of this. I believe the Scary Sharp system for all of this is about $60, and I got mine at Tay Tools, Taylor Toolworks, uh, but I believe they sell it on Amazon as well. And they sell the replacement paper, uh, multiple sheets uh, of each grit for, I don't know, $15, $20. And these really do last a long time. I've had these for, like I said, about two years, and I've probably only changed each of these maybe two times, if that. Um, some of the higher grit ones, not even not even once. I think the 60,000 uh, is still the original one. And they're very easy to apply, and because they're on glass, they're absolutely flat. Next, we have the Husky Calipers. Now, I got these at Home Depot for really cheap, maybe $20. But in general, any calipers is the point here. Now, a lot of people use this for measuring uh, the internals or externals of things like their table saw miter gauge. You're able to get the exact width, but personally, I use them almost entirely for uh, plain, planing down the thickness of wood. If I screw up on a project and I need another piece of wood that is exactly the same size, this allows me to sneak up on it. Uh, it comes with an extra battery and a carrying case. I've never even replaced the original battery after about two years. Um, so it's likely going to last you a long time. And the ability to get incredible repeat accuracy by using these to the thousandth and maybe even they go down to ten thousandth of an inch uh, is really, really good. Now some people prefer the analog dial indicator and that's absolutely fine. Uh, they didn't sell that at Home Depot. Uh, it may be better long term since you never have to replace a battery. It's going to be a little lighter. This has some heft to it. Um, it's also got a depth gauge on the end. Uh, it's very, very handy for any kind of measurement. So I highly suggest getting one of these for about $20, $25. And almost certainly your local Home Depot is going to have this in the measuring tool section. The next thing I really love is a small whiteboard. Now it's probably about $10 if you need to get markers, the eraser, and the whiteboard itself. Uh, I like the compact size because I don't have a ton of room on my walls. However, a bigger one would be great as well. And I mainly use this for just quickly writing down measurements that I know I'm going to need to remember at some point in the future, uh, especially if I'm doing multiple versions of a project that are at different sizes. Sometimes I make multiple versions of things, well, a small one, a large one, etc., etc., and I need to remember uh, 
how big are all the mortises? Stuff like that. You very quickly put it on there, you're done, you just erase it and you're good to go. Uh, I, there's just nothing handier than having a quick ability to jot something down. I put it right over the bench I often work on and it's always right there for me. So really consider one of these, especially the small ones if you're in a tight shop. Since we're over at the whiteboard, we'll just talk about the next one. It's these small magnetic lamps. On Amazon, about two of these were about $25, $30. And they come with two little magnetic plates that you can stick anywhere. It's got an incredibly strong adhesive in the back, and you can just clamp it on there. Uh, I have one on my bandsaw, and I can move this one around if I need it somewhere else because it is magnetic. Uh, they are corded. Some people prefer a wireless um, or a cordless one that you charge the battery for. Uh, I've had these for a couple months now and considering how cheap they were on Amazon, uh, they've actually worked very well. They're very bright. Obviously, you're not able to replace the bulb really easily, if at all. So these are kind of, you know, I don't call them disposable, but if they do uh, burn out, you're going to have to just get new ones. But at the price, it's not the biggest deal. Uh, so consider picking some of these up if you can't afford a ton of big shop lights. I only have two shop lights in here plus a couple little bulbs, so I need extra light over here. And I'm able to just set this up and get plenty of light when I need it. The next tool I'm a really big fan of is this 7 inch Suizan or Suzan uh, Japanese pull saw. Now I'm not particularly good with cutting uh, accurate lines with it, but what I do use it for is cutting dowels. I make my own dowels uh, because I often want the wood to match and trying to cut these things on the table saw is a nightmare if you only need a small piece. They go flying off into nowhere. Uh, the band saw doesn't leave a nice clean edge. So I like to use this on this bench hook uh, hand saw and just cut through the little dowels just like that. I also use this to finish uh, the resawing. If my table saw blade is not high enough or my bandsaw is not big enough, if I'm resawing an eight inch piece of wood, um, I'll go through and I'll finish it with this. Now obviously they make a larger one. Um, this is enough to get me through most things, but if you need uh, a longer one for some reason, they do make a larger size. This is about $30. Uh, I've used this outside trimming uh, branches off of trees. Uh, the, the general one has a rip blade on one side and a cross cut on the other. They do make dovetail specific ones, um, but I really like the dual, the dual functionality of this. And again, I'm not using this for precision. Sometimes I'll just break down my stock with this. I got rid of my miter saw a while ago. And when I get my lumber home, I just cut it up into pieces with this. It's very quick. It has a replaceable blade on here using this. And uh, so when it gets dull, you just take that out, you order a new blade for, I don't know, 10 or $15, and you're good to go. And the final thing I absolutely could not live without in my wood shop is a good, trusty glue gun. These things are ridiculously cheap. They make battery-powered ones if you want. This is probably 20 years old, and I use it uh, in replace of double-sided tape. Uh, double-sided tape is expensive over time if you're doing a lot of template work. It's very quick to turn on and heat up. It's incredibly cheap to get new glue sticks. And it just, for holding down anything temporarily quickly, it's incredibly uh, efficient. I use it on my planer sled to hold down the pieces of wood. Uh, it's a great investment. If you find yourself using double-sided tape a lot and it's starting to add up in price, consider getting a hot glue gun uh, to replace that. Now, obviously the holding power of hot glue is less than extremely nice double-sided tape. So it's got, you know, situations where it's appropriate and ones that possibly where double-sided tape is. I do keep double-sided tape around, some really nice carpet tape uh, if I need something to be held, you know, extremely tight. Uh, but I've never had anything pop off uh, after using the glue gun. And you can always use more dabs of glue to get an even stronger hold. The biggest upside of this is it really easily comes off of wood and in my experience doesn't leave a mark. Uh, sometimes double-sided tape can leave a little bit of residue. This stuff, just a little uh, chisel and it just pops off, sometimes even just your fingernail and you're good to go.